today's session on what is the MVC life cycle. Do you know friends that a model view controller design pattern is used by the developers to efficiently manage the relationship between the user interface and the underlying data. MVC divides the application into three logical parts which aids in the development of web applications. So if you want to be a web developer or work in a related field you should learn about MVC framework. So for the same, watch this video till the end. But before we head on to our today's agenda, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So first, we are going to study about what is MVC. Then we are going to discuss about what is MVC life cycle. Moving ahead, we are going to learn about popular MVC web frameworks. Then we are going to discuss about advantages of MVC. And at the end, we are going to discuss about the disadvantages of MVC. So let's start with what is MVC? MVC is an architectural pattern that divides an application into three main logical components, the model, the view and the controller. Each of these components is designed to handle specific aspects of an application's development. MVC is a popular industry standard web development framework for creating scalable and extensible projects. Now let's understand what is basically MVC life cycle. The life cycle is essentially a series of stages that occur at specific times. MVC life cycles includes the application life cycle and the request life cycle. The application life cycle begins when the application process starts the running server and ends when it terminates and it tags the two events in your application startup file specifically the application start and the end event. This is distinct from the request life cycle, which is the series of event or stages that occurs whenever an HTTP request is processed by an application. Now, let me discuss some example of it. A real world application of the MVC framework is something like this. Consider a real world example. In a restaurant, the waiter takes your order, goes to the kitchen and informs the chef. The chef gets the ingredient for your meal from the refrigerator. When the food is ready, the waiter returns to the kitchen and brings it to you. In the preceding example, you serves as the view, the waiter serves as the controller, chef serves as the model and the fridge serves as the data. In the in example, you is the point of view and cannot communicate directly with the chef who is the model. Now we are going to understand the MVC request life cycle. Routing is the starting point for every MVC application. The received request then determines that how it should be handled with the help of the URL routing module. The routing module is in charge of matching the incoming URL to the routes defined in your application. Every route has a route handler that is associated with it. The MVC route handler retrieves an instance of the MVC HTTP handler. If the request matches a route defined in our MVC application. The MVC handler begins the initialization and the execution of a controller. The MVC framework is in charge of converting a route data into a specific controller capable of handling requests. This is accomplished using MVC components such as controller factory and activators, which are in charge of creating an instance of the controller class. Following the creation of the controller, a component known as an action invoker searches for and selects an appropriate action method to invoke our controller. Model binding also occurs prior to the calling method, which maps the data from our HTTP request to the parameters of our action methods. Before and after action results are generated using an action filter. After our action result has been prepared, the next stage is the result execution which is triggered. If the result is a view type, the view engine will be invoked, which will locate and render the view. If the action result is not a type view, it will execute on its own. The result execution does nothing more than generating a response to the original HTTP request. Now comes the application closing date. This event is triggered when our application terminates and no further requests can be received. This event is rarely used but it can be used if you want to run any task before the application intentionally shuts down. This is an excellent location for it. Now comes the pre-application begin. 
In some cases, you want to run some custom code before the application starts. We have the option of using the pre-application start method in this situation. In the reality, this method defines at the assembly level. Now, we are going to understand about the controller initialization. The first one is the process request method is basically in charge of responding to an incoming request. This requires the creation and execution of a controller. First, it invokes a child method, calls a process request in it, which requests a controller from the component called controller factory. Using the passed route data, the controller factory selects an appropriate controller class from the current application. The factory then employs a component known as controller activator to create an instance of that class. When instantiating the request class, the controller activator employs a dependency resolver. It implements the patterns such as dependency injection. After acquiring the controller through these steps, the MVC handler invokes the execute method on the controller. Now, the next phase is action method execution process. The action invoker is in charge of determining and carrying out the best method to handle the incoming request. It selects by matching route data to the method name as well as the action selector applies to that method. Once the method was chosen, the authentication and authorization procedure were carried out. MVC filters are used to implement these security measures. It is made up of components that allow you to inject logic into the processing pipeline. The first authentication, this filter verifies the person if the person is who they say. If the authentication fails, then it is sent back to the requester if it succeeds. We move on to the authorization. It is checked what the requester is allowed to do. If the requester is not authorized, it is sent back to the browser. If the user passes both the phases, the pipeline advances to the next action invoker method to execute. Before the method is executed, it must have parameters populated, which is where model binding comes in the picture. So it takes data from the request and uses it to create the requester object. The action invoker then calls a method after all parameters for the methods have been passed. The model binder retrieves the data from the value providers to populate the action method parameter. Now, let me discuss the model binding service flow. The MVC provides four default providers for collecting data from the common location. Form data, route data, query strings and file. These classes collect data from various sources related to the current requests, after which an action filter is executed. It executes two methods, on action executing, which fires before the action method and on action executed, and it fires afterward. At this point, on action executing filters are run. And after these executions are completed, the action method calls itself and returns the action result. In short, it determines and prepares the types of response that will handle the request and on action executes filter run, allowing us to add logic into the pipeline before the result. Now, we have certain filters such as output cache. This filter is basically used to cache the action output for a set of period of time. Then we have handle error, this filter is basically used to handle errors caused by actions or controller. If an action exception occurs, the action is redirected to custom error page. Then we have authorize. This filter is basically used to restrict the access to the resource to only authorized user. It should be noted that we can create a custom filter by implementing a specific filter interface class. Now we have view result execution process. The action result execution is triggered by the action invoker before the result is executed. The filter is also exposing two methods. The first on result executing fires before the action result itself. And after this method is run, the action result executes the result is called. The MVC provides various types of action results, including the pipeline branches between the two paths. If the result is in view or partial view form, the view engine renders the view. Otherwise, this result generally handles writing the response out itself. Following the execution of the on result executed method of the result filters. This is the final point of MVC where you can inject your own logic. Now we have action result execution process. The view rendering process begins here, where the action invoker calls the execute result method on the object. In the case of view results, the execute result method is actually defined on the parent class called view result base. 
As a result, the invoker calls a base class execute result method, which in turn calls an abstract method called the find view. This method is basically overridden by the child view result class, which uses it to ask the view engine to find the correct view. The view engine returns a view engine result, which contains either the acquired view or the list of location, where it is attempted to find the one. Views are nothing more than the classes that implement the view interface, which defines one and only method called render. Basically, the MVC web frameworks that are popular because of MVC is essential a way to arrange and organizing your code. Thus, we understand this life cycle and it makes very simple also to maintain the large databases. Now, let's discuss some of the MVC popular web frameworks. So, we have certain frameworks which are quite popular such as Django, Laravel, CakePHP, CodeIgniter, Catalyst and Ruby on Rails. These are the popular MVC web frameworks. Now we will understand why these web frameworks are quite popular by understanding their advantages. Now we will discuss about the advantages. The first one is more rapid development. MVC divides a code into three tiers. When designing the web application using the MVC approach, one developer can warn the business logic and speeds up the development process. Next is the large applications are quite well organized. The three-level code separation makes partitioning and organizing web application functionality in large-scale apps quite simple. The primary advantage of using such code practices is the ease with which specific code sections can be found and new functionality can be added. Then we have the asynchronous techniques are also supported. MVC works flawlessly in JavaScript and its framework and it unsurprisingly supports asynchronous method invocation, which is AMI, allowing developers to create faster loading web apps. This means that MVC application can work with the PDF files, site-specific browsers, and desktop widgets. Then if I talk about the several perspectives are also achieved using the MVC web framework. The MVC patterns basically returns the data without any formatting. This makes it simple to generate multiple view components from the same model component by separating data and the business logic and it also reduces the code duplication. Next, we have the SEO friendly platform. MVC architecture can help to efficiently build SEO friendly web pages and web application. The test driven development or TDD employs this development architecture. You can use MVC in conjunction with scripting languages like JavaScript and jQuery to create a feature rich web application. Now, Let's discuss some of the disadvantages of MVC web framework. The first one is basically the complexity. The MVC design pattern develops a new level of indirection with regular updates. These enhancements increase the solution's complexity. In addition, the user interface code base expands, which causes a problem when troubleshooting it. The next disadvantage if I talk about is basically the price. The price of the frequent updates. If the model is frequently changed, the views may become overburdened with the update request. Views such as charts and graphs may also take longer to render. The view component lags as a result. And the final is, it is insufficient for small applications. When working with small application, we reduce the value of MVC framework. It has a potential to make small application unnecessarily difficult to manage. Using an MVC in a small application can also be detrimental. That was all for today's session. I hope so you enjoyed our session on what is MVC lifecycle. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in software engineering, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification program on software engineering and application development by ENICT Council of IIT Guwahati. And it is taught by IIT Guwahati professors and industry experts. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.